Hello, fellow relics of a rapidly vanishing past. In this video, we will take the voice-controlled AI assistant that we've been building and combine it with the mighty powers of OpenAI's GPT-3. So by the end, we'll be able to ask our AI assistant any question we want and have that taken to the OpenAI API, get a result, and then have our AI assistant speak it out loud to us. It's going to be fun and easy, so let's just jump in. But first, let me just catch us up with our bearings. Where are we now? We've been building this voice-controlled AI assistant in Python. You can look at earlier videos to get to this point, or you can just download the code repository in the video notes and follow some basic steps to set up your virtual environment in Python and install the relevant dependencies. For reference, I'm running this now on Windows in Visual Studio Code in a virtual environment where I've already created the dependencies. So you can take those steps and then you should have this voice-controlled AI assistant that can do certain things like take voice notes, query Wikipedia, talk back to you, open websites, and whatever else you might want to add. So we'll be adding to this here. Great. So let's cover the basic steps we need to do. We need to gain access to OpenAI's API. We can do that from their website. Though, do note, at the moment, early 2023, there is a tiny, tiny cost in dollars to query the API. So something like on the order of less than a cent for small questions. So you may need to put a dollar in to this project. I just want to let you know. We're going to get our API key and credentials. We're going to install the relevant dependencies so that our Python knows how to play with OpenAI. Uh, we're going to set those credentials in an environment file. And then we're going to start adjusting our code so that we'll have a method to go to the API take what we want to take to it, get a good result, and then increase the brain of our voice assistant and um, have it actually do what we want. So let's jump on to the website. OpenAI AI has been taking the world by storm, of course. You can create an account, as I have done, and start getting access to the API you'll see that there are different language models we can access, where the famous current one that people are talking about is basically this most powerful one, Da Vinci. Uh, it's going to talk about tokens. Tokens mean roughly uh, pieces of words, where a thousand tokens is equivalent to about 750 words. So once you've logged in, you can set up the billing and then create your API keys. Now I'm going to create some here, but um, I'm going to delete them after I make this video so they won't be accessible anymore. You need the API key and then an organization ID too. You can get the organization ID from the settings on your account details. This one here. So we get our API key and our organization ID. And those are the credentials we need to start talking to the OpenAI API. There's some good documentation when it comes to OpenAI. We can read about key concepts, about prompts, good guidance for how to design prompts, and then what tokens mean and what are the different types of models. And of course, this is a space where there's rapid change happening. In a few months, there might be better, cheaper models available for you to plug into. We can jump down to the API reference part to learn more about different kinds of requests, but this is where we can draw some examples from as well. But let's just do it in code. So let's assume we've got our API key and our organization ID. We could stick them right here in the code, but it's better practice to put them in an environment variable perhaps. So we can, what we can do is create this .env file and this is going to show you the keys that I will change, where we can create these variables, let's say in all caps, um, that then get loaded at runtime. 
So I'm creating a variable here called OpenAI API key. I'm pasting this API key that I will delete and then the OpenAI org that I have. Now they're there. So that covers the basic bits. And then we make sure that we've got our uh, dependencies installed. So when I'm in my project folder, I can run pip install to make sure that the right parts are there. I've already done that. So we're installing, of course, OpenAI to have the methods to talk to the API. And to then load this .env file, we will install python-.env as well. Now let's jump to the main file we've been working on and start implementing this in our code. So let's import the relevant dependencies. Um, we will be importing OpenAI and importing uh, the relevant bits for credentials. So OS and uh, from the .env module we installed, we import load.env which we can run here. That then loads in the environment file and loads all the variables found as environment variables. Great, so that's the initial stuff at the top. What we then need to do is start augmenting our virtual AI brain. So we can add our module for querying OpenAI. So if we've said our keyword, then we can add another keyword, for example, that tells our AI assistant to go talk to OpenAI. Ask, for example, or insight. I'll use insight. And when we do that, we can take the remove the latest entry. Uh, so insight won't be part of the query. We'll rejoin the query and then we will generate our speech by querying OpenAI, a method we need to create next. We will maybe tell the user that something is happening. So once you've given the command and it's querying, it's going to say, okay, uh, that can be anything you want. And then we've created the speech variable that contains the response from OpenAI, and we're just going to speak it. So this flow is just saying, if I say computer insight, blah, 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 it's going to remove the insight word. It's going to identify that, okay, now we want to talk to OpenAI. It's going to do that query, get a response and speak it out loud. That's the logic here. But of course we need to make this happen. How does it actually query OpenAI? So we can add another module here, a bit of a method after maybe this Wolfram Alpha one we've got earlier. So. We can define our method. Query OpenAI is what we called it. Uh, we'll want to pass it a prompt, which might default to nothing. So what's the prompt that we're passing on? And here um, we need to set up the, the authentication, or we need to do it somewhere in our code. We can do it by calling OpenAI and then saying the organization we're dealing with is whatever the environment variable for OpenAI org was. So the thing that we defined just there in the .env file. And similarly, we had our OpenAI API key as a variable. So now they're, now they're set. So OpenAI knows to talk to the right place and uh, has access. And then we can get our response. So for that, we call OpenAI.completion Great, and look at GitHub uh, already giving us um, giving us a prompt here. So we want to use the DaVinci Engine, the best available one, um, if we can afford it, not that it's that expensive. We pass the prompt, we put the temperature in there. So what's the temperature? Temperature basically uh, is a measure of randomness. We can leave that note to ourselves. And max tokens, as we remember, talks to about uh, the number of words to generate. Um, so about if a thousand tokens or about 750 words. I've been using about 80 and maybe the temperature, we don't need to be terribly random. We can experiment with that. There are some uh, 
stop uh, stop texts that um, GitHub Copilot is giving us, uh, we can maybe roll with that. So we're going to get our response, and once we get our response, it's an it's an object. So we want to specify what we bring back from there. And again, um, GitHub Copilot has the right answer. So we'll be responding uh, responding with the first element in the choices array, response object, and taking the text there. That will bring us just the text of the response. There's various other bits of metadata we could be interested in, but that's what we're going to use. So briefly, we're defining our OpenAI querying method. We are giving it the credentials that we have in our environment file and that you definitely do not want to expose to others, definitely do not want to share with others. We then call the OpenAI completion to uh, take our prompt, take it to the DaVinci engine and toggle some parameters. I'm going to keep the max tokens low. I'm going to get nice and concise answers, I hope, and it's going to keep the costs low as well. So I think that's all good. And let's see if that's already enough. Let's see what this says. OpenAI query is not outlived it the other way around. It's query OpenAI. Great. Perfect. Let's run our code. All systems nominal. Computer, insight. What are two key themes of cyberpunk? Okay. One, high tech and low life. Cyberpunk often explores the juxtaposition between high tech and low life, often focusing on the struggles of people living in a world of advanced technology and oppressive systems. Two, rebellion and resistance. Cyberpunk often focuses on the idea of rebellion and resistance against oppressive systems, often through the use of technology and hacking. Thanks, OpenAI. And that's fantastic. Now we've connected our voice AI assistant to all the mighty powers of OpenAI's latest GPT model. And before we close out, let me just cover some of the changes I made to the parameters here in the OpenAI call. So change the engine to text DaVinci 003 to focus on these kinds of text queries that I'm most interested in. Uh, instead of image stuff or code. And I removed some of these uh, parameters I wasn't using at the bottom to simplify. So that's all I'm doing. And now I want to leave this over to you to do whatever you want with all these newfound AI powers. I hope you have fun. Computer, insight. What's the best way to wrap up a YouTube video? Okay. The best way to wrap up a YouTube video is to thank your viewers for watching and encourage them to subscribe to your channel and share the video with their friends. You can also include a call to action, such as asking viewers to leave a comment or follow you on social media. Finally, you can provide links to related content or other videos they may be interested in.